This oh, right Rob, I'm here. recording. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome back to FLX Bike. I've got with me here a little impromptu, a baby maker. And as you know, we do have a high capacity lithium battery inside the frame of the baby maker. And today I wanted to show you how these batteries get made. So take a trip with me to the battery factory. Welcome everybody back to the battery factory. And by the way, if you're enjoying these videos at all behind the scenes, please take one second to hit that subscribe button below. This is gonna allow us to make more and more behind the scenes videos showing you what goes into making your bike. So the very first thing that happens here is we get all these cells in a box and we take them out, load them into this really, really cool sorting and testing machine here. So the batteries go through the testing machine and what's really important with e-bike batteries is that we use cells that are very, very, very similar to each other. So we have a very tight spec in terms of the voltage and the internal resistance of these cells when they arrive. If they don't fit that spec, we will not use them. But even the ones that do fit the spec are separated into four different groups based on similar characteristics. And those groups will be used together in one battery. We, they will not be mixed because by using similar ones, it will prolong the life and make the battery perform better. On the machine here, you can see how we've programmed those settings for the four groups. On the left, you'll see the voltage and on the right, the internal resistance of the four different groups. So after the batteries are sorted, the actual physical construction of the battery begins. And this is a 10S 2P battery with 20 cells in clusters of three. That's how we're going to build it to get it small enough to fit inside the frame. So you'll see we're using industrial adhesive here to build clusters of three that will later be stacked one on top of another. Next, the battery cells are taken in that cluster of three and we weld tabs on them. One side gets a tab connecting the two and the other side gets its own tab. That's because it's a 10S 2P battery, which means there are 10 cells in series and two stacks of those in parallel. So with the tabs welded onto the clusters of batteries, now some insulation is installed here and we're gonna use those to stack the batteries and make sure they don't short out between the different cells. So the ones that are supposed to be together are together and the ones that aren't are insulated from each other. So you may be wondering how we take 20 battery cells and use groups of three. There is one at the end there. You'll see it's the two batteries together that will account for that. So there's gonna be 18, six stacks of three and one stack of two to make 20 battery cells. A high strength fiber reinforced tape is used. This is very similar to packing tape to hold them all together. If you try and rip it with your hands, it's virtually indestructible. To connect all the tabs, wires will need to be soldered onto them. But before we do, we need to install an anti-abrasive pad, basically just some padding there under the tabs to make sure that over time, they're not going to wear into the battery cells themselves, which could cause them to short. Definitely need a very strong pad in there just to keep things separate. So with the appropriate padding insulation installed, first we're going to prime the tabs with a little bit of solder and then add the wires, solder them in and together in the correct pattern so that it is a proper 10S 2P battery. If these are wired incorrectly, that battery is not going to work. The white wire here is the end of a wiring harness and those will be wired to each pair of cells. That's gonna allow the BMS to read the voltage of each pair of cells. So instead of getting the total voltage for the battery, we will get the voltage for each pair of cells and be able to sense if there is a problem with any one group of cells. Once those are wired in, the technician here will confirm that it is reading approximately 3.6 volts for every pair of cells. We don't wanna see a zero or a seven that would be bad. It should be about 3.5, 3.6 volts per pair. So here you'll see another cable is being added. That's going to be the cable that connects the BMS, which is a battery management system. You'll see this board right here. 
It's the smart computer that controls the charge and discharge of the battery to make sure it can be operated safely and for a very long time. After those are welded, more insulation is applied to every joint. Make sure we don't get any weird things going on with this battery. Next, this amber tape, it's a high temperature insulating tape, is applied to all the joints of the battery. Special props to our factory technician here who is keeping everything nice and clean and organized. Good wire management, that's what we love to see. So an insulating card is applied to that group of only two cells at the end of the battery. The information cable is plugged into the battery management system, that small computer at the end there. And now we'll just work on it, add more insulation all around the battery management system. Make sure there's not gonna be any contact where there should not be, make sure it's well protected and we'll install that right over that group of two cells so it fits right in there. So with everything in place where it should be, more of that insulating tape is used to tie it all together. And look at all those beautiful, semi-complete, halfway built baby maker batteries. So at this stage, the battery is functionally working. The wiring is there. Before we complete it, we take them over here for some testing. We wanna make sure that everything is working properly. So we're going to charge them up all the way and then discharge them. And then we're going to charge them up and discharge them to 50%, which is the recommended voltage for shipping. Here on the computer, we can see the actual testing data of each battery there. You've got the serial number of the battery cell, the number of the testing unit it's in, the amperage it's charging at, and the voltage of the battery. The next step is to add the external interface of the battery. So that means the charging cable, basically everything that comes from the battery to the outside world, uh, which is just inside the bike frame for you guys. But this is the charging and discharge cable that he's installing now on the battery. Next, more of that high temperature insulating tape is installed. And a final touch, our tech here is writing down the last four digits of the serial number on the cable because the serial number that's on it now will be covered up. So here we've got a big red strap being installed on the battery. What that is, is if you ever need to take your baby maker battery out of the bike, we wanna have a big handle for you to grab onto. So this rest assured goes all the way around to the bottom of the battery. And when you pull on it, that red strap is pulling everything out. So if you ever need to remove it, pull the red cable and it will come out of the frame. Very, very, very strong nylon strapping there. Once the nylon strap is secured, a thick, thick insulating layer, adhesive on one side is wrapped around the battery. Good way to hold everything together. And finally, a barcode is applied to it. So with the battery mostly assembled and the charge and discharge cables there, another charge and discharge testing cycle is initiated. What this is, is uh, one cable is charging at two amps. We're testing the voltage, the internal resistance, and we're also discharging at two amps and checking when it's discharging, how much is the voltage drop, make sure everything is within the tolerances laid out for this battery. This one is passing every test with flying colors. One of the secrets of this battery you may not have known is there is a hard aluminum chassis at the bottom of the battery added for strength. So that's really going to keep everything together make sure nothing can break apart. If you see the little tube on the table there, that represents the down tube of your baby maker. So we gotta make sure it can fit within that tube after everything is installed. And it goes up and down, perfect. The battery is inserted into heat shrink and using a heat gun, we shrink that right onto the battery, nice and tight, like a glove, baby. The excess heat shrink is trimmed and manipulated to closely adhere to the end of the battery. Same thing on the top of the battery, excess trimmed and the rest of the heat shrink manipulated to get real tight in on the end of the battery. Finally, the charging cables and strapping are moved out of the way and we add a weather sealant to both ends of the battery to make it as watertight as possible. So with that heat shrink, all the layers, that should prevent any moisture from getting inside the battery. That's it, that's how you build a baby maker battery and look at that stack, oh, those are beautiful. Those are going in your baby maker.
All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, please be sure to take a second. Hit that awesome subscribe button, like, comment, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>